today I've got a very, very special guest. Um, so in front of me, I have Andrew. Now, Andrew is going to introduce himself, but I want to explain a bit about the reason why I've decided to bring Andrew onto the podcast. So as most of you all know, I speak with coaches every single day. I work with coaches as well. And some of the questions I get asked on a regular basis is to do with the startup and the legal side. So I decided to bring Andrew on the podcast. Um, it took a little bit of convincing, didn't it, Andrew? Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he has decided to come on. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about different different things that coaches are asking me on a daily basis, right? And the the purpose of it is to help you guys with making good business decisions. And if you are based in the UK, right? Andrew is an accountant based in U the UK. He's one of my longest uh, friends, and he's also an accountant for my training business as well, right? So he's got a lot of experience, but I'm going to let Andrew introduce himself before I speak too much and I say stuff that might not be true. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thanks. Uh, thanks, Leo. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm the, uh, the founder of Valor Accounting Services and um, I specialize obviously with UK businesses, uh, whether it be, you know, sole trader or limited companies um online businesses as well and um yeah i i specialize with with the startups um i i do have a passion for working with startups also growing businesses um but with the startup side of things once you get the foundations right um for business owners um the rest of it is is really really easy so um so yeah that's me in a nutshell nice good N nice short introduction <laughs> <laughs> awesome so Andrew, um, talk to us a little bit about uh, the startup phases for for coaches, right? Because you've obviously worked with me. I'm a, I'm a coach myself in sport. I have a training business. I know you've also worked with other coaches as well. So tell us a little bit about some of the struggles that coaches face with the legal side of of the business. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, initially, I, I get a lot of queries with um, with sports coaches that want to start their, uh, their their business journey, and they're not really sure um, what business structure to to start off with. And it's normally just a, a conversation that I have with them, um, talking about what their plans are in the mm -hmm. future. Um, and of course, there are going to be tax implications uh, with that, um, what their personal circumstances are, for example, if they are employed. Or have they left employment? So it's about um, finding a bit more information about uh, the, you know, the, the the business owner or the to be business owner. Um, and it's to be honest, it's just really educating them on how it really works. And it's a lot of it is quite a big stress for sports coaches to understand the the tax and legal side of it. So my job is to really um, explain to them in a very simple way. Uh, how it all works um, and just you know reassure them that of course I'll be doing all the bookkeeping the accountancy side of things but uh, especially if they become a limited company they have to learn a little bit more about their duties as maybe a director um, even if you're a sole trader as well you have to understand certain um, you know tax implications um, and duties you have to um, you know you have to go by um, mm -hmm. as as a sole trader. So so yeah, that's that's m mostly it. With um, startups, it is just that understanding how it all works. Yeah, love that. So I remember when when I was starting up, and this is something that I feel like a lot of coaches do struggle with, um, and that's one of the reasons why they reach out to people like myself is because they want to set up their business but they don't know where to look, right? Or, or who to specialize in this type of niche, okay? Because at the end of the day, sports training is a specific niche uh, in itself. So talk to us a little bit about, like, so a lot, a lot of the coaches that watch our channel are coaches from all around the world. But obviously, because you're based in the UK, 
I'm a UK trainer myself as well. A lot of the content that we're going to share today and, you know, the topics we're going to talk about are, are more specific to the UK, but they can kind of be applied to other markets such as Canada, US, et cetera. And if you are a coach watching in the US and Canada or another part of the world, you can reach out to, to me and um, just visit the, in the description below, there's the number of ways you can reach out. So Andrew, talk to us a little bit about, so say I'm a coach that I'm looking to start a business. I'm in the UK, right? What are the two main ways that I can set up my business legally? Yeah, so uh, good question. So for, for, the, for the purposes here, I want to be talking about a sole trader and a limited company um, by shares. Now, that's not to say there are different um, business structures, different uh, legal entities, which you can uh, trade. And, and to be honest, they could be a separate podcast in itself. You know, you've got yeah. um, community interest companies, which are kind of social enterprises. You've got partnerships. Uh, I'm right now going to focus on sole trader and limited company by shares mm -hmm. um, and how kind of uh, sports coaches can decide which one to choose. So essentially, how I would start with the client is what's their kind of commercial reason for um, for whatever business structure they, they decide to choose. Uh, what I always say, and this is this is something that's um, in the tax kind of community is um, never let the um, the tax tail wag the commercial dog. And what that means is, is you should never let commercial decisions um be a 100 determined by the tax side of it of course that is a factor for sure but especially for sports coaches they have to look at what their future uh what their future journey is and what they want to do in the future whether it be employing people do they want to sell the company mm -hmm. um how much do they want to grow it do they want funding as well mm -hmm. so these are kind of all the things that i would um you know discuss with um with the client and just to get a bit more into the specifics, uh, with a limited company and, and a sole trader, i.e. self-employed, with a self-employed person, they're essentially... Let me, let me just stop you right there, Andrew. So for yeah. anyone that's in the US that doesn't know what a private limited company is, so a private limited company out there would be an LLC, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it would be essentially an LLC and sole trader is self-employed. Uh, I had to bring that in because we do get a lot of american coaches watching so yeah so, no worries sorry yeah. to sorry to cut you out there <laughs> no no problem at all and, and to be honest it's true it's a lot of these things will actually um relate um to outside of the uk as well because they're very similar structures so with the self-employed um the whole one of the biggest reasons of um deciding whether to go limited or self-employed is what's called limited liability and um the clues in the name with a self-employed uh person they're liable for the debts of the business uh, and that obviously extends to their personal assets um with a limited company you have that protection of your private assets um and and that's why the limited liability does come in there it's limited to the amount of money you've invested into the company now there is also another thing as well is that you can get lenders um, and even some suppliers that you're working with, um, they may require a, uh, a, you know, they may require directors to give a personal guarantee. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's essentially kind of where it does kind of extend to their personal assets as well. So it's very, very important to read the fine print mm -hmm. of it. And, um, and obviously that does reduce the benefit of a limited company. That's one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other aspect of it as well, more specific to sports coaches is, there may be some businesses that you may work with um, and that may, may be hiring sport facilities. Um, they may only want to work with limited companies and that's, that's the honest truth of it. Um, they may not, they may not see as, as working with a sole trader. If you want to hire some sort of sports facilities, they may require it has to be done through a limited company. Not all of them, of course, but that can be a requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, also another thing as well, depending on the specific industry within sports coaching because you can get different ones there it can be seen as um you know you want to be seen as more established 
it can be me seen as uh, as more professional as well. So that's another factor that you've got to take into account is the image that you would like to portray. And certain industries, uh, you know, on the outside of, of sports coaching doesn't really matter, doesn't really matter. Um, and that's another thing as well, where it's really, really important for sports uh, coaches to do their research within the industry they're in um, to, to, to make that decision. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing as well is the administration and the cost side of it. So, yeah. For example, a limited company, you're going to be you're going to be sending, you know, accounts to company's house. You're going to have to do a company tax return to HMRC. You've got to do a yearly confirmation statement. The administrative burden um, is is a lot uh, compared to, you know, being a, a sole trader. Sole trade is very, very simple. Also, there's other things as well as, you know, duty as a director. You have to understand certain concepts. Um, and obviously we spoke about it as well, Leo, like a director's loan account. What is that? You know, yeah. with a with a sole trader, you can just take money out as and when you wish. With a limited company, it's a separate legal entity, meaning that, yes, you can take money out, but it's got to go through what's called a director's loan account. And that could also be another podcast in itself, but just yeah. to kind of um, mention that. Also, the accrual basis of accounting, you know, with limited company, you don't have the option to choose a cash basis of accounting, which is a much simpler form of, of accounting. Limited company, it's a cruel basis, um, and it's understanding how that works as well. Uh, another thing is in employment. You know, whether you're a sole trader or a limited company, you can employ um, you can employ people. The only difference is with a limited company, you can employ yourself. With a self-employed uh, business, you can't employ yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing as well is obviously the one that I guess a lot of people are, are you know, um, interested in is is what's better in terms of the tax side of things. Uh, generally speaking, now each case um, has to be looked in um, specifically, but generally speaking, at the higher um, income of around a net income of around 45,000 uh, per year, it's generally more tax efficient to go through a limited company. Um, now that would vary as well because we've recently just had um, tax changes in April this year, where um, limited companies um, above profits of 50k, uh, corporation tax is higher. So things are changing. It's and it's always really good to to um, to definitely plan plan it in advance and, and know these things because it always mm-hmm. these things always change. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing as well is funding. Funding is something that sports coaches may want in the future, whether it be through uh, lending or maybe investment from from, you know, angel investors, for example, to to help grow their business. It's a lot more. It's a lot easier to get funding. It's not to say that you can't get funding through a self-employed business, a lot easier to get funding. And there's a lot more options via a limited company. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's something that's quite, quite, quite important. Another thing as well is, do you want to sell the business in the future? Mm-hmm. Same sort of thing with uh, with the funding side. It's a lot easier to sell your limited company uh, than selling your sole, sole trade business because they, there won't be many investors who would want to buy into a sole trade business, uh, whereas a limited company, that's a separate legal entity. It's a lot easier to, to, to do that. So you have more options there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing as well, which has to be mentioned is what do the coach what do sports coaches want to do do they want to have it as a, a side side job yeah um do they want it to be is it their can it be something that they're it's like their life purpose that they want to do going forward and that's the only thing they want to do and and they want to grow it um mm-hmm. that's another thing because if you want to just have it as a side business a self-employment route may be the way to go it's it's you know that that's completely fine as well um, and another thing as well is, do you want to have partners? You know, if you want to have other partners in your business, limited companies, a lot easier to like, you know, get another director. They can have a, a share, a, a share in the company as well. It can, it can be evenly split. It can be allocated more shares in the future. So trader, a little bit more tricky. You'd maybe have to do like partnerships and things like that. And, um, it can be a little bit more tricky, whereas with limited company, a lot easier to, to to do that. So that's another thing as well. As a sports coach, you may want to have, uh, you may want to work with other sports coaches as well mm-hmm. um, going in the future. So so that will be something as well that I will discuss 
um, with, um, with, with clients as well. And it's not to say that you can't change your mind later. You can, that, that is definitely, you know, I've had, had, uh, you know, clients that they start off as a sole trader and they want to transfer to a limited company that is possible as well. So it's not to say that you can't do that. What I would say is planning is key mm -hmm. and, the earlier, the better, because transferring everything over, you're talking about, you know, bank accounts, possibly creating a new, you know, in terms of accounting software, you may have to get a new package for that. You've got to speak to your suppliers, direct debits, money, you know, that could be quite stressful. So yeah. doing it early is um, is definitely important. Uh, it is key as well to, to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I want to touch on, of course, we can speak about so many <laughs> areas uh, in this uh but where sole trader as well and it's more about the cash flow side of it with the sole trader if you're uh if your tax bill is over a thousand pounds you have to pay what's called a payment on account and that's an advance payment for the next year tax bill uh that can hinder your uh cash flow because that money you're paying to hmrc is for the next year's uh, tax bill, which you've got to pay, but that money could be used for your business. Mm -hmm. Now, for a limited company, payment of account doesn't really exist. doesn't exist. You pay your tax bill and that's fine. Whereas uh, a sole trader, as I said, if it's a tax bill over a thousand pounds, they essentially have to pay half of that in advance, which can hinder their, um, their cash flow where they could have invested it in other areas of their business yeah um and just another thing as well with vat now i know we're talking a lot about starting your business but vat is essentially if your turnover um goes over eighty five thousand for the year then you have to register for vat now of course that's a bit beyond the scope for of this uh podcast but there are certain exemptions for sports sports coaches for VAT where they may want to um, get benefit of having a sole trade business and a limited company. But as I said, that's another mm -hmm. that could be another uh, podcast in itself. Awesome! So fantastic information. Um, I think you broke it down really well for for everyone. Um, so. I think also a fear that a lot of coaches have at the beginning when they're looking to set up is finding an accountant that they can trust. So someone that's going to do a good job, obviously the intent is to try and save them money. So what are a couple of tips or pointers that you can suggest to coaches that are in that phase of looking for someone uh, that's going to do a good job for them? Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, it really depends on who's going to be working with you. Um, yeah. the, there's upsides and downsides of, for example, a large accountancy firm, you may be dealing with, if you've got payroll, you've got your limited company, you've got VAT, you may be dealing with different people, you know. Um, for example, me, I, I deal with, uh, you know, I'm the, I'm the only person that deals with uh, my clients. So I deal with everything in terms of the VAT, the payroll, corporation tax. And that can be something that's quite important for business coaches because they may not get along with, you know, the department of VAT, for example. And, you know, I believe communication is, is key. Um, so any sports coaches that are looking to um, to work with an account, an accountant is to understand who they're going to be working with. It's mm -hmm. going to be something that is very, very important because that sent that working relationship is is so important going forwards because you're going to be working with them um for essentially the whole journey of your business mm -hmm. so i think that's something that's really important is that they have to really speak to as many accounts as they can um and understand and and you know it all depends on the individual as well i have don't get me wrong i have some clients potential clients that have come to me and uh we just maybe not worked well together. They they may see see things in a different light, um, and that's okay as well. You know, there is there is someone out there. Um, for, there is an account out there for for each business owner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not to say that each uh, any accountant can be suitable for you know all the um, all the you know all the businesses out there as well. So that's something to think about. Another thing as well is 
it does the accountant want to understand your business because that is another thing that's really really important understanding uh your business is, is paramount to, to everything in terms of giving them tax guidance yeah. uh, and if you have an accountant that works with other uh businesses in the same industry they can give you insight especially at the start of your business that um that could help you uh mm -hmm. to grow quicker as well and uh and to, to be honest this is something that i kind of um pride myself on is is explaining to business owners accounting terms which they would need to know yeah but in a very simple way mm -hmm. um because i find that's very very important it, as i said it, it is the duty as a business owner to understand certain concepts um to, to run your business mm -hmm. perfect love that so andrew well I want to thank you for coming on today um this is something that we're looking to do quite regularly um so today's topic was obviously we we're touching on the best options that coaches have when they start up next podcast we'll be focusing on on another area of the legal side of of training and coaching so thank you again for for coming on here sharing your knowledge with our audience um, and what we're going to do is in the description, if you want to get in contact with Andrew directly, obviously Andrew works mainly with business owners in the UK. So if you are a UK based coach or trainer and you want to start a business, uh, visit the description below and you can get in contact directly with Andrew through there. That's awesome. Thanks for having me, Leo. Awesome, Andrew. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Take care.